Uh, hi everyone, my name is Alexandra Nikandrova and I uh, uh, am a technical writer in uh, Red Hat for slightly less than three years. Uh, today I want to uh, tell you about how to contribute to open source without writing any code. Let's dive back uh, 30 years back when on August 6, uh, 1991, a computer scientist Tim Berners-Lee published the first ever website. This website was about the World Wide Web project, which described the web and how to use it. So basically it was the documentation. And he fought for it uh, to that it stays open source um, and it could grow. Even the company he was working at uh, wanted to patent it. Uh, what is open source and why do you need to participate in its life? I will talk about open source in terms of software. In this case, open source software is a software with its source code open to everyone, which can anyone can view, modify and improve. Of course, this person must know programming language, algorithm, structure of the project and so on and so on. Why open source versus proprietary software? I would say security reason. I will tell you why. Um, there must be, there might be an argue, but still, um, to my opinion, uh, having uh, open source, using open source um, software, you have better control. Even if you have some bug or whatever <laughs> in the code, you can fix it. You can make it. Um, yeah, in a proprietary software, you don't have this opportunity. And you, it is more visible for you how the software operate uh, with the data, with sensitive data, if you feed this data to this uh, software. And in, a proper, in terms of proprietary software, you have to rely on the, on the provider of this software. So you don't have control of that. Um, the other reason um, proprietary software is pricey. I will share my personal experience um, a little bit. I am fond of photography and the first thing which comes to my mind, came to my mind, was Photoshop. But back then it was so extremely expensive. I couldn't afford it simply. It's an amazing software, but yeah, back then it was very pricey. So I did some research and I found GIMP. GIMP is an amazing tool as well. It has all the tools I need for my hobby, for my needs. <laughs> so I went for open source and I'm pretty content and happy with it. And um, with all these amazing features and accessibilities of open source software, there are still some pitfalls and one of them, unfortunately, documentation. And I will tell you why. Well, programmers are the smartest people in the world and they can add a feature, they can describe the feature actually, but it will be something like these calls, this function or uses this library and it should look like that, but it's too technical. Or programmer may not describe it at all. So, or add some, um, some comment in the code. And you, you may not, you may not need, don't know how to read the code. So, and you don't need to know. Uh, so you will be spaced out and confused. Maybe you will figure out how to use this software, maybe not. But while you will be figuring out how to use the software, you will spend a lot of time to find a uh, decent solution how to solve your problem using this particular software. So that's... <laughs> um, 
And this open source software, um, so open source projects usually um, supported by open source communities because usually one person cannot uh, write a good code, cannot test it properly, and yeah, probably cannot add understandable documentation. So basically, in open source communities, we have developers. They are writing code, they fixing bugs, and they are a source of ultimate technical knowledge. We have users. Users are using software and occasionally can report a bug if they find any. But how? How can you use, how the user can use this software without proper description? Because, uh, of course, um, user can learn by trying everything, but that's time-consuming, as I already told. So that's why we have technical writers. And technical writers are basically a missing piece <laughs> between a developer and a user. And they, making, ma they are making software usable. As a technical writer, you don't have to understand the code. But unlike most of the users, because uh, users can be not, uh, may not be a part of the community and just using this software like found it somewhere for uh, solving their um, problems. <laughs> so unlike those users, you have uh, access to developers and you can ask them for better explanation and developers in my experience usually helps um, because it's almost impossible they understand that it's almost impossible for a user to achieve some results by using their software <laughs> um, and yeah in this case um, your help as a technical writer is really really important main question where to start from a very simple way is to start with your familiar software, the one you're already using. If you struggle now and then with something, it's a good sign that software is lacking documentation. There are other options. You can find the project on the GitHub or GitLab, where the majority of open source projects are located. Those are popular platforms that store the code and uh, other co uh, project-related information and allow collaborate on it. And the third option, which I used, <laughs> is participate in uh, some events like Google Season of Docs. Um, in this event, Google supports open source organization by, uh, by inviting technical writers from all over the world to contribute new documentation uh, or improve already existing documentation. Me personally, particip I participated in this event last year, 2020. Uh, I chose Wireshark project. I applied for it and was um, accepted as a technical writer. And I had to document 37 men menu items from scratch. They were undocumented. <laughs> they, the documentation did not exist um, at all at that time. That was quite a challenge because, you know, Wireshark is um, a very powerful tool for analyzing network and a lot of people are using it, including um, uh, developers, network administrators, like basically a lot of people who are interested in what's going on in their network <laughs> um, using something like that. And Wireshark is pretty popular, even it is, even with this popularity uh, documentation, a little bit a mess <laughs> there, unfortunately. Um, and I got lucky with this project because they were using similar tool chain uh, to the work I do for my full-time job. Um, they have GitLab, they store their project on GitLab, and the documentation is written in ASCII Doctor. Other than that, <laughs> I had a hard time. Uh, some information 
was outdated or did not exist at all. People who contribute to that project, they are living all over the world and they obviously have their full-time jobs and lives. <laughs> so um, sometimes it took me several days to get a reply uh, or even find a proper person to, to ask. <clears throat> and um, searching on the web was also a struggle because some technologies are quite unpopular or simply old and don't have much description on the internet. Besides that, I had to work my eight hours shift per day, my full-time job, and refocusing between something completely different, it not, it, uh, it's not an easy process sometimes. So, yeah. But I finished the project successfully, and I'm pretty happy with the results. And, yeah, <laughs> this is actually a picture I found of also drawing a little bit. This is a picture I was struggling to document TLS <laughs> in Wireshark. It's uh, my fun art for this uh, project. Um, yeah, I will share a little bit of uh, facts about Google Season of Dogs. So, um, in 2020, there were 87 projects accepted and only 78 of them were successful so roughly nine percent um, of documentations like of the project failed so that's a good result actually nine percent it's not a huge um, um, chunk but still this nine percent of documentation is missing and users are struggling with uh, this software and that's actually might be your chance to contribute to open source without writing code <laughs> yeah you can take this opportunity and to sum up we are surrounded by open source and we might not even realize that for example world wide web how often do you admire this project it feels like granted isn't it <laughs> doesn't it so yeah, and also you as a writer can easily start contributing too. I contributed uh, to Wireshark project and it actually benefited me as I improved my writing skills, it's my profession, and um, I improved my technical knowledge. And I helped the project grow and as well as I helped myself grow, so. <laughs> you can do that too i'm sure if you do have any questions now it's time to ask presentation alexander i mean i have yeah. heard a lot about google season of box but you i got some more deeper insights it was really great and you didn't sound like a newbie speaker at all Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's a compliment. Thanks a lot. Anyway, if you don't have any questions or you have it, eh? sorry, uh, I will I share it once again. <laughs> uh. I'll be sharing yep. link to the breakout room. So. Yeah, um, if you don't have any questions, I um, provided some links to uh, what I was talking about. It's a Google Season of Dogs uh, project. Um, I wrote a um, small article about what I did during this project. If you are interested in um, documenting things, uh, and we are using ASCII Doctor, uh, this is the page for it. And if any questions, uh, you can contact me via my email and I will try to answer <laughs> if I would be able to. Other than that, thanks a lot for your attention and I wish you uh, enjoy the rest of the uh, conference and rest of the day. And the weekend is in front of us. So. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks, Elizabeth.